I'm Stephen Clift. I'm the founder and executive director of eDemocracy.org. We connect people in their neighborhoods to each other online to build awesome communities. The digital revolution has been a great thing for democracy. Not in all ways, though. If you look at what newspapers are doing online with anonymous commenting and how it's kind of ripping apart communities. So it isn't just about using the technologies neutrally. You actually have to use them with intent. I've seen amazing things happen in small towns, in different countries, all around the world that I've visited. And people can have a voice. People can make, solve problems. Governments can provide more information. But unless people bring their democratic intent to it, it actually doesn't measure up. I used to be a cyber optimist. You know, I started in 1994 and I created the world's first election website. I mean, I got a lot of attention. I traveled the world and I would talk about how the internet was part of this revolution. And so what I found is that you actually have to define what I call a cyber pragmatism. You have to realize that when you, when you roll up your sleeves and, and you tinker with the tools, you can shape it. And we need a lot more people to help shape the tool to benefit democracy because ultimately those who have power know how to use these tools and they're using it to divide us, and put red meat out there and raise a lot of money and win elections and that's Great for them, but for most Americans, most people in this world, we're not actually getting the empowerment we could get from this technology if we used it in ways that would benefit democracy. eDemocracy.org unites people online, but crucially, we do it right at the neighborhood level. We connect neighbors to one another online so they can build an awesome community. What we found is that at the state level in Minnesota, where we created that first election website, uh, people kept talking on our Minnesota politics forum. But when we went local with that model in 98 and now to the neighborhood level actually in England and now in Minneapolis uh, in most recent years, what we found is that we can get 20% of my neighbors, I got 800 of my neighbors talking, right? So letting people say who can recommend a good plumber one day followed up by a discussion about crime or development or inter inter engaging with their elected official. The key is this, if you want to give people power, you connect them to their elected officials where they're actually voters because most of the politicians that pay attention to the net, they love Twitter. They love to sort of pound their chest and you know, you know, stand on the soapbox. But if you can actually organize voters based on geography within districts, that's powerful. When it comes to digital opportunities online and using sort of the latest and greatest tools, I think we often become enamored with the shiny object. And the truth is, is there are a lot of things that actually just work really well. There's a reason why campaigns collect your email address. They'd like to ask you for money. Well, there's a reason why my nonprofit, when we do online forums in low-income, high-immigrant neighborhoods, we walk around with clipboards. So our most powerful technology is the stinking paper sign-up sheet. First name, last name, email address, connect with your neighbors. And so understanding that technology is there for you to use, but don't get stuck. Always trying to use the latest and greatest thing. Remember, if you can't actually reach people where they are with technology, be it email, web, web feed, Twitter, Facebook, you go where they are, and you don't choose one technology over the other, particularly in geographic communities, or you've lost a good chunk of your audience.